Well, all right, all right, all right. As Matthew McConaughey says, um, what we have here is a box from eBay. We have nine cars. Okay, so I did get everything I ordered, but I haven't really looked at the cars. But let's take a look and start learning about these things. So this uh, 356 was designed by the son of the founder of the company, Fabry Porsche. And there's a little 1.6, maybe a 2 liter uh, Boxer 4 in the back, the different engine sizes. The uh, larger engine made 95 horsepower. And I looked up, uh, well I found the price of this car. Back in 1948 at least, one of these cars cost around $40,000 in today's money. So that's a pretty good value for a Porsche. Granted there wouldn't be all the modern uh, benefits of a, a modern vehicle. Okay. Uh, this is the first uh, 356 to have disc brakes all around. It's also the last uh, 356. It's the Gen 4, again, the 356C. So this is a 1965 version. It's the coupe version, obviously, but there were convertible versions as well. I'll try to get one of those later on. Okay. And this car was relatively successful in uh, racing. It actually won its class in the 1951 Le Mans race. So that's pretty... Uh, pretty cool okay well let's take a look I am noticing oh, this finish of this car is so great it's like the clear coat looks nice I can feel it's quite smooth there's no roughness but look at the orange peel of this silver paint it uh, it doesn't look very appealing it's just not a flat paint compared to the silver of this Ferrari all right the Ferrari smooth silver I don't know what happened here with this uh, 356 so, off the, you know, immediately I'm thinking maybe you guys should buy the Shuko version. I'm not sure if I'll ever get the Shuko version to compare them. Possibly. Mm, I don't know. We'll continue on here. All right, so there's also a, like a chunk of metal, a dent or something going on there. So that's not very good. These wheels are pretty bad for a Kyosho. Mm, hold on, let me angle the camera down so there's better light, light hitting it from the photo booth. I don't know, those are really plain, kind of bad wheels for a, a Kyosho. I feel like they're muted, they're, uh, it doesn't seem like as much definition compared to the ones we're going to see next. One thing that is nice is this chrome trim right here. It does, I don't know if that's the casting, let me see here. No, it's not even chrome, it's black. It's part of the casting and it's painted black, but the black actually isn't really well applied. So. Again, these are used cars, so I'm not sure if this is displayed or played around with. So, the black I can understand, but uh, this, you know, isn't going to be a result of playing with. This paint is pretty bad. Really bad. Really atypical of Kyosho. Okay, well, you do have the gold printing of Porsche there. The taillights are just painted on. It's like a painted red metallic. Some sort of black stain there. I don't know if I can get that off. This side here, not sure what that hole is. Okay, yeah, the front are plastic inserts, so that's good. The front turn signals are painted orange, and then we have the Porsche crest there. Seems okay. Mm. So black interior again, just darkness. Can't really tell what's going on. No scratches. Clear coat's fine. So in this case, it's just the the silver paint itself underneath the clear coat. It's really weird. Really bad. Almost, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, let's move on. This will be a long video. Okay, so let me put this thing in the background. All right, so the next car is the Miura. So this is considered the first supercar. It's the first uh, rear mid-engined car. And there's a V12 here, a four liter V12 in the back. And it's actually mounted transversely, meaning the cylinder, cylinder banks run this way, not, not in axis with the car. Okay, so this is the P400 version. Uh, actually, to be more specific, the P400 SV. And uh, there are 150 of these made. And the Miura itself had a production run from 1966 to 1973, but this being the last version of the Miura, it started being sold in 1971. Okay, It was designed by Marcello Gandini, who also uh, designed the Countach, which we're going to get to later. And, uh, you know, it's a really attractive car, physically, I think. It's a voluptuous shape, kind of like a 
smooth RS soap, I guess. I don't know, it looks really nice. Okay, so let's take a look. Obviously, I think you can see the paint rash there in this lime green. I do like this color, but uh, unfortunately, this model's got to be pretty old. I don't know how old it is. It didn't come in the box. So, no idea. Okay, well, we might as well start at the bottom. We got the plain black exhaust tips as part of the bottom molding. Nice treaded tires there. Going around to the back. Well, this is nice printing here. Mirror SV, Lamborghini, a little keyhole, the plastic taillights with paint color on them. So that's good. A texture to this grill. That's nice. The rear louvers here, just one solid plastic. No air going through them or anything like that. Oh, well. The wheels look really great. Much better than that 356. Really nice detail. You know, tight lines, crisp edges, nice corners not rounded off or anything like that. This gold trim panel is pretty nice to look at. Just a blanked off there. Is it painted? No paint there. No paint in the vent. It's still the same gold. One thing that seems odd is the door handle. Is it up here maybe? I don't know. Maybe that's the door handle. Okay. This green also, it's filling in the panel gaps quite a bit. It's really hard to see the door panel gap. It's just so much paint in there. That's the problem with opaque paints. The metallics seem to be better. You can see a lot of molded detail on this interior. Unfortunately, again, it's, it's black, so. And then uh, the front headlights there, they are angled, you know, it looks proper. They're kind of like that when, they don't, when they're in the off position. There is some ribbing here, so that's good. And a tiny, looks proportional, looks correct. A tiny size Lamborghini uh, badge there. Silver trim around the windows looks good. A little windshield wiper painted silver, so that looks good. So, it's a nice casting of a very iconic car. Unfortunately, this green, I just got bad luck there, being an old die cast. Too bad. All right. Well, let's go on. So the next one, I'm going out of year order, because uh, this is a Mirrors, the concept car that they redid. And this was done in 2006 and uh, penned by Walter Da Silva and it celebrates his 40th anniversary so I just want to compare this to the first one but let's just look at this car for now alright so nice wheels they do look similar to the originals just obviously much bigger with modern uh, size rims not sure how big they really are though yeah so carrying over this vent but the casting again no paint nothing there now this being a metallic green, you can see the door panel is a lot better because less paint is needed, so really nice. The clear coat seems okay. Unfortunately, there's a little, I don't know if that's bubbling or a contaminant in there, in the roof, so that's too bad. There's also something right there, so that's too bad. Okay, the louvers, again, solid plastic, but say silver this time around, or aluminum. The rear, nice printing of Lamborghini, super cool taillights, and I guess that says Miura right there. So that, that's pretty good. We've got the textured grill and then physically indented exhaust tips, which are good, but I kind of feel like they might should be hit with silver around the rim. Not sure, maybe the original car just has steel or titanium tips. Okay, flat belly pan, some diffuser veins. Okay, much wider modern tires there with some different treads, so that's good. Let's get around to this side, any issues? Well, that side seems all right, I guess. Uh, something there, but... Okay, and then the front end. Much bigger headlights. Still a nice badge printed on. And then you have this intake, or... Well, it's an exhaust for the radiator. And there is a texture on that plastic. So that's nice. It's not just smooth and painted black. It's physical plastic, which I'm imagining is part of the interior piece. Or maybe not. Because I am now noticing the windows are flat... I mean, they're opaque black. You can't see an interior. That's a first, I think, for my Kyosho collection. I got uh, many Kyoshos, and most of them have transparent windows. And this being a concept car, maybe there was no interior on the original. Or Kyosho just had no access to photos of it. Maybe the interior was so poorly made that it wasn't even worth making as a, as a model. That's the only explanation I could see for Kyosho doing a black window like that. Okay, so let's take a comparison view here of these two cars. You know, with modern uh, requirements, 
cars are just bigger because they have to have side impact protection, airbags. You got to fit in all this extra electronic gear, the air conditioning, uh, all sorts of computerized systems. So it's clearly a much, much bigger car in pretty much every dimension, it seems. Wow. It's almost like they're two different scales. So that's, I did not expect them to be that far off. But, you know, this car is from the 60s, so I guess that makes sense. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, all right. Let's carry on. Oh, well, one last thing to compare again are those wheels. I can definitely see the family, family resemblance there. All right. Just a modern update of those things. One nice thing are these tires, really rounded, a little flatter because they're modern low profiles. So Kyosha got did a good job on the wheels and tires here. Okay. Next in line we have the Maserati Bora. So this uh, had a production run between 71 and 78 and a couple different engine sizes. You can have a 4.7 liter up to a 4.9 liter making around 300 horsepower. And it's a mid-engine, it's covered up here, but there's a V8 back there. And uh, this is the first Maserati to have independent suspension. Although, Kyoshos don't actually have suspension. And this was designed by Jajaro. Okay, this thing had a steel frame and it also, it also had a stainless roof and A-pillars. So that's why it's painted silver here on this model. So it's kind of similar to uh, the windshield frame of the... Uh, BMW owned Rolls Royce Phantoms. So this is supposed to be stainless or a DeLorean, a whole DeLorean stainless steel. And around 560 of these things were made in history. So I guess that's pretty decent for Maserati back in the 70s. Let's talk about the casting itself. This looks really nice, this view. You got this black painted and a little orange turn signal. This rubber molding I assume is what's on the real car. A little overrun there though, a little black there. These wheels, they do look nicer, they're very plain. I find it odd that there wouldn't be like a center hubcap or center graphic. I don't know, I didn't look at photos of the real car. Okay, but uh, here we got transparent windows now, so that's good. The silver door handle looks nice. A little silver missing from the A-pillar there, so that's not very good. But nice silver trim around the windows here, silver molding some sort of black fence there okay not much on the back it does look like there's printing but it's so small I can't I assume that must say Maserati because it's longer and maybe that says Bora because it's shorter maybe the camera can see it but my screen's so small I can't tell plastic we got some orange and white and I guess it must be red maybe up at the top one but anyways there's some color there in those tail lights tiny tiny exhaust tips but what's nice is they're chromed and they're separate from the bumper the bumper looks like a separate piece so why is it this car from Kyosho has such tiny awesome exhaust tips and like a lot of the other ones just have plain Jane black ones so I don't know but this model is nice there's a lot of grooves here in this uh, rear vent okay let's well go to the bottom here some indication of the subframe in the back and the belly pan and your independent suspension. Okay. Narrow tires, which seems correct for the 70s. Okay. All right, so that side's identical except for this gas cap cover there or a fuel filler door. Ah, some uh, ribbed vents up there. And there's some vents back here, but these are just flat casting and painted black. Okay. Okay, so yeah, some interior stuff, but it's just black, so hard to tell. Silver paint on the windshield wipers, molded into the plastic of the windshield itself. This silver paint here on the front hood. I don't know if that's like an intake for the interior. There's no texture there. There's no I'm not sure what that is. Could be used to kick up air over the windshield, disrupt the air. Not sure. Okay, but for a red car. These panel lines are pretty good. Red cars are really susceptible to filling in all the gaps. But this one seems all right. So I got I locked out there. And then that must be the Maserati logo of the time. It actually looks similar to the Maserati logo of today. So seems seems correct. Unfortunately, the chrome 
paint or coating on this black plastic is flaking off there. That's too bad. I'm not sure how old this model is either. Oh, again. No, wait, that's a reflection. No, it's not a reflection. The chrome is just gone. It's not even there. So that's too bad. It looks like there's a little silver here. Maybe these are running lights, these rectangles. And that's a really nice Maserati logo right there in the center. Textured uh, grills, so that's good. So, that's a shame. It's uh, this die cast, you know, this particular model, everything's nice and smooth. It's just that the chrome is flaking off there. I could take a Molotow pen to this. If you guys don't know, this brand here, Molotow, these are chrome pens, liquid chrome, and they work really well. They dry super fast though. You only have like one chance to get it right. But uh, I could easily just hit that edge and duplicate this. But I'm not sure if I want to risk it, to be honest with you. But if you guys want to risk it, try to look up a Molotow pen. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, next in line is an, another iconic uh, Lamborghini. Again, uh, designed by the same designer of the, of the uh, Mira, Marcelo Gandini. Is this focused? Try it. There we go. Okay, so this is the first version of the uh, Countach. So this is the uh, LP400, and the LP400, I mean the Countach itself had a production run from 1974 to 1990, but this is the first version, and around 158 of these first versions were made. So the first version itself is a really clean design. You know, it's, it's close to what... Uh, Gandini was looking for. The later ones have all these crazy fender flares and wings and stuff. They look like body kits almost. So this is super clean. It looks like a wedge. It looks like a doorstop. Alright, so let's talk about the casting a little bit here. So I think immediately off the first initial impression, it's not too bad for yellow. Yellow like red, usually you have to fill in a lot of paint. To cover up the casting you can see the darkness of the casting there because there isn't enough paint so it's a ba balance between not seeing the metal or filling in the panel gaps hmm. I'm not sure I, I think I'm okay with the paint thickness on this one okay these wheels look really nice much better than the first car you know tiny little spokes I got this smaller probe it looks like air but I think Kyosha just does a good job. No, it is air. Wow, crazy how thin these spokes are. Look at the back wheel. You can see the green of the grass or my finger there. So, that is some, those are the thinnest spokes I've seen on a Kyosho so far that actually mimic a real wheel. Whereas Aoshima and TLV and some other Kyoshos, like my recent classic Skylines, these are all black, blocked off and just painted black. But this is a physical wheel with air running through the spokes. So that is that is quite great. That is uh, really, really nice to see. Again, I like the coverage of the tires. Okay, so let's look at the bottom here. Some, eh, not the greatest detail there. But it seems, again, period correct with the width of the tires. And it seems like all, almost all Kyoshos have different tire treads on them. So it's a nice detail that they add in there. What's not great though is how they blend in their exhaust tips with the bottom piece and then they don't even bother painting them. Although maybe from a car from this era they wouldn't have any chrome tips. It might just be a steel tube and it might be rusty or carbon soot so it might actually be black on the real car. Okay rear lights look really nice. We got some orange. Can't really see the white but red there is good. And I'm not sure if the logos are going to show up there because it's silver on yellow, but it does say Countach and Lamborghini, so that's good. I seem to have a paint chip right there, which is a darn shame. Again, this could be a used used car that was played with. So Gandini styled a lot of trapezoids in his uh, design. So trapezoids, all these trapezoid shapes, that's the design language for this car. Okay. And while I'm back here, I'll talk about, this is the first uh, longitudinal V12 of all regular road cars to my understanding. That means that the cylinders are now running parallel to the center line of the car. But what made this car, uh, well, unfortunately you have to have a lot of radiators, next, big radiators next to them. So the car's quite wide. 
and that led to the design of the scissor doors. The scissor doors were originally shown on like the Alfa, Alfa Carabo concept car, but there is a functional reason to have a, a scissor door that just goes vertical because the radiators here, you have a huge side sill. So if you had a normal door swing out, it would be really hard to reach the door handle when you're inside the car because your butt would be right here because the side sill is so wide. So they felt that if they took scissor doors, you could sit on the side sill to get in and out of the seat easier. And then if you're still sitting here, the door handle will be closer to you than if the door was way out here on a traditional door. So that's the explanation of why there's a, a scissor door. And it also just happens to look crazy awesome. So, okay. So another thing about the engine that I learned here is most engines you have an engine and then you have a transmission attached to the rear of it and then you have a drive shaft go to the differential. In this case, they actually put the output shaft to the front of the engine and then the, the transmission is here between the seats and then the drive sh there's a shaft running back here to the rear axle. So the engine really is in the mid position and then there's better weight distrib distribution because the transmission is up here. And f so that's really smart on their part. I never knew about that. Okay. So this car has a steel space frame and an aluminum body panels. Okay, so those are all the technical things I found about about this iconic car. I want to talk a lot about this car because let's face it, this is an icon of automotive uh, history. There are some ridges here on these uh, vents here. Ridges there as well. Nothing here though. This uh, intake is just flat die cast and it's painted black. No indications of mirrors. Maybe the I guess it must have had a tiny mirror there, I'm not sure. My casting, again, it's got a physical gouge in the metal before it was painted, so that's not good. This tire is messed up. I'm gonna have to probably flip that around later. Okay, nice uh, small Lamborghini crest. There's some orange peel in the paint, but at least the clear coat seems to be pretty smooth in most places. Plastic inserts there, and the pop-up headlights are down, so. We got some silver painted running lights there and then some ridges here in the bumper okay so i guess it's okay it's not the best example of this particular die cast uh mold but uh i can live with it i guess all right so let's go on oh, i'll put it on the stand here the rotator so now we're getting into the modern era although this car is long gone tvr they've been off and on for quite a while. There's company, companies trying to revive it, but I guess TVR right now owes a lot of money, like maybe two million British pounds of, of uh, outstanding debt. So there's no TVRs coming in the near future. But this TVR we're looking at here is the, the Tuscan, uh, Tuscan Speed 6, I believe. Let's see what the plate says. No, it says the Tuscan S actually. This is the third generation Tuscan. There was one in the 60s, there was a race car in the late 80s, and this is the one that came out in 1999 and had our production run up uh, to 06. And they had many different engine choices up here in the front. They're all inline sixes between 3.6 liters up to 4.2 liters. And these things had a steel chassis and fiberglass bodywork. So for the foreseeable future, I'm sure many TVRs will look nice being fiberglass and not gonna rust away. Okay, so again, now, wow, this paint is really, really thick. I mean, uh, this, that, I feel like on the real car, that should go in a lot further, first of all. This seems really shallow. Okay, well, I'm trying to see. There is a metallic flake in this orange. It is actually orange. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, metallic orange, so that's, that's pretty nice. Hopefully it won't have paint rash. The wheels, they seem pretty good. Uh, no, no, I, I, I withdraw that comment. What's going on with this spoke? That spoke is jacked up. And they kind of, it almost looks like this wheel was pulled out of a different mold than that wheel. Like, it, this, this looks all muted and messed up. And that looks a lot crisper and better. Hmm, okay, well, there's a texture on the front here of the grill. It's uh, painted in orange, so that's pretty good, I guess. The weird bug eye headlights, they're painted very nicely for such small dots. Again, look at the size of my fingertip and that small dot, so that's pretty good. TVR logo looks really nice. Nothing here. 
there should be black there but they didn't get it oh well okay so this side the wheels they look better they're they're more consistent I would say so I guess I'll display it from that side mirrors here separate pieces but no paint <clears throat> black interior black painted uh, wipers okay really cool curvature here the clear coat is pretty good on this look at the reflection not much orange peel orange peel that I can see so that's good the paint on this one's pretty good so uh, lucked out on here that must say Tuscan S and then we got three red dots for the the lights back there and then nice exhaust tips they're physically molded in there and they're hit with silver so Kyojin is weird half the time you get they do a good job and then half the time they just ignore the, the cars that even have exhaust tips okay now we're getting to some wider modern tires again the treads are different so that's nice this must be indication of the central steel chassis okay so yeah this one this is a great model I guess uh, the paint's a little thick but uh, it might be the best model of this bunch in such a crazy styling I wish uh, TVR would come back in business and this one did come in a box by the way so this one was 490 yen which is around five dollars in today's money so it's just amazing that you can get such a great car for five dollars but unfortunately Kyosho's now are like 15 to 30 dollars so it's, I don't understand the inflation or they just they just know people will pay that much money for a car anyways I am definitely going to have to get a few of these other ones here uh, like that F1 GTR, that's Sagaris or Sagaris for sure, a DB5 for sure. This is already here. Uh, I got that. Maybe these two as well. So, anyways, just to also let you know, this model that TBR is made in 2009. So, for a diecast from 2009, this thing is definitely held up very well. It looks brand new. So, very happy. Okay. Okay, let's go to the Ferrari here, 458 four, Italia, and the 458 Italia first came out in 2009, ran up till 2015, and the Spider version, what we're looking at here, first came out in 2011. So, it's following standard nom nomenclature by Ferrari, there's a 4.5 liter V8 back here, and it makes around 560 horsepower. A couple of innovations for Ferrari on there bread and butter road car. These front uh, winglets here can actually move to reduce drag at high speed. Uh, can I focus there? It's hard to see because they're black on this die cast, but yeah, these little winglets protruding out, they can actually move a little bit. And uh, they also had pre-fill carbon brakes, meaning that the pads would actually be close to the rotor to have less delay time when it's braking. And it's also the first direct injection engine for Ferrari and their road cars. Okay, so looking at the casting, it's pretty nice actually. This silver is so much better than the uh, first car we looked at. Let's start with the top here, because that's really nice to look at. The Ferrari script there is looking super crisp. And then the molding itself, I mean, these panel lines look great because it's silver. You don't have to fill in the gaps. Really nice. What's this black here? Those are recessed and they're painted black, so that's the nice. This is a little bit recessed. There's a lip and it's painted black, so that's nice as well. Super nice translucent taillights, grill texture, painted red there, grill texture, three pipes, little silver paint and the prancing horse in the rear so very nice no complaints at all quite quite fantastic really flat belly pan some diffuser blades okay tires again staggered i think no yeah they are staggered a little bit the rear is a little bit wider so that makes sense logical the pin and frena script there in the bottom here and it is there anything above i can't tell usually there's a uh, their logo but i can't see Door handle molding, pretty good. Orange dot, Ferrari crest, very good. Mirrors, no paint, but it is a silver car. Does seem to be like a defect there, or that might be a parting line of the die cast mold. Yeah, it's on both sides, so that's, can't do anything about that. Okay, now look how crisp these wheels are. These wheels look pretty great, I think. Yeah, no brake rotors though, Kyosha doesn't do that. 
Okay, so the front lip, very good. Let's see here, the prancing horse is painted, so that's good. Ferrari badge doesn't look too large, seems relatively correct. Headlights look good. Again, really tight door panel. I mean, not door panels, just panel lines. And in particular, right here where the, the bumper meets the quarter panel, that's a really thin line. So that's neat. I think these are little passive vents for the wheel well. Wheel well pressure vents. Okay, so this side, well, unfortunately, there's a contaminant there and a gouge there. Or maybe that's a scratch. And there looks to be a bubbling starting right there. So, uh, this one happened to come in a box as well. No price on it, though. Not sure when Ferrari Mini Car Collection number 9 came out. But, uh... Oh, it does say it. Never mind. I'm a moron. This came out in 2013. So it's a little bit newer of a model. It's starting to have some problems, but not as bad as that Miura. Okay, so what's great about the convertible, obviously, we can see the interior quite a bit better. Unfortunately, it's just all black. So take what you will from that view. Okay, so I guess it's alright for a used car. Okay, so a variation of a the 458 came out later on and that would be the GT2 so the GT2 was developed to chase after the GTE class of uh, proto of road racing and GTE that means Grand Touring Endurance so this is a really successful race car for Ferrari they won their class wins with uh, in 2012 and 2014 and of 617 races that this car uh, entered they had 104 wins they actually, in their classes, of course. That's a really good uh, ratio of wins versus entries. So, a very successful car for them. What's odd is uh, it actually makes less power than the road car because of racing regulations. And they got rid of the moving front uh, splitters. So, you can see here, if we can compare the two, the, the road car has these little black splitters on the sides, whereas the race car is just gone. Again, racing regulations, so. So, interesting, I, this is a, not a regular black. I can actually see the body contours pretty well. It's like a dark, it's like a metallic black. Super dark gray, I guess. Almost like a carbon, carbon metallic. It's really nice, actually. And it, it seems to have a satin or a matte finish. I don't see, it's not really glossy. So that's a little different for Kyosho, at least all the Kyoshos I have. It's really neat. These wheels aren't so great though. They, again, look really rounded. I'm not sure if the real car has rounded edges like that. It just looks muted. Not very not very good at all compared to the car spinning behind it. But great panel lines here. There's a NACA duct, the badge printed there. All sorts of bodywork, fuel filler cap, sliding window. In this case, it's actually open, so I think that's cool. Most Kyoshos don't have open windows, so that's a nice touch. Wow, the engine looks pretty good, although there's not much color in there. It's just, uh, I think it's all black. Yeah, that thing's reflective, but it is black. But I like these cross braces and stuff, roll cage braces, indication of the engine. The wing's plastic, but it's pretty nice. The rear, prancing horse. Exhaust tips are painted silver this time around, indented, so that's good. Textures on these, all these vents, so those are, that's good. I don't know what this silver dot is or what that is. Maybe a tow, tow hook goes in there. What is that though? Maybe starter? Starter motor? Hmm. Anyways, but these are actually red plastic. Might be hard to see because it's covered by the wing, but they're, they are red. Maybe you can catch it? Nope, sorry. Okay, another fuel filler cap it looks like. Okay. Front, in, front interior is different from the road car. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but I can see it. There's a fire extinguisher canister right there. There's no seat on this side. Ah, it's so reflective. Sorry, I don't know if the camera will catch it. But there's only one seat, being a race car. Textured grill in here, very nice. And the Ferrari logo looks good. Headlights are fine. Textured front, very good. A little plastic splitter here and some little winglets there vents for the wheel wheels so yeah this model is quite nice actually I am now looking at it with the naked eye and I don't see any paint problems at all no scratches no gouges great 
Very happy, except for the wheels. The wheels are kind of weak. Oh well. Alright, the last car. This is the Aston Martin DBS. And uh, this is uh, based off the older DB9. And this had a production run between 2007 to 2012. And what we're looking at is the 2011 version. Their last version is called the Carbon version. So, Aston Martin DBS Carbon. Okay, so there's a little 5.9 liter V12 up front. It's a 2 plus 2 coupe, of course. And that's all I found out about the car. So, let's look at the casting. Now, see, a lot of orange peel on this one. So, it looks like a cheap economy car. The wheels do look nice, though. Nice, nice crisp corners and stuff like that. So, that's neat. Okay, nice tight body lines. So, that's good. And there's a little bit of metallic flake in this paint, which I think is why the panels are not filled in with all these uh, paint, like a regular opaque paint. Okay, so while we're at the top here, just a, no, there's a texture there on these uh, hood vents. Nothing there though. I kind of feel like it'd be nice to have black down in there. Aston Martin logo looks pretty nice though. Well, it's just the shape of the logo. You can't see any other color or anything like that. Like the green or, or is it dark? gray in the logo not sure okay but the headlights are fine texture to the grill itself texture underneath this grill and a little bit of black hit in those vents there so that's good that's physically part of the casting this vent here let's go under there we go decent detail staggered wheels again totally different tread okay Exhaust tips though, no paint. They are nicely molded. You know, I'm putting this probe in there, but no paint. But they got paint here for the reflectors. The taillights look pretty nice. They're clear plastic and they printed black to show uh, the shape of the taillight, like on the real car. And Aston Martin printing is very nice. And the badge there. That silver strip, I'm guessing is a third brake light. I don't think it's script. And then over here on the side, it says DBS. Okay. All right, so top stuff, same standard stuff with Kyosho, just nicely molded, but black, so hard to see. Okay. I'm not sure if the real car has black mirrors, but there's a lot of, being called the carbon edition, maybe those are carbon fiber mirrors. Okay, so the silver trim around the windows is nice, but it's black here and black in the there as well. Okay. Let me take a look here at the naked eye here. Mm. Yeah, I don't see any major problems. It's just the orange peel effect, but no scratches, nothing really bad. So I guess I'm okay with that one. For some reason though, this doesn't, the tires are like scraping the body. So if you're into rolling cars, this might not be the one for you, but uh, I'm okay with it not rolling. Very well. Well, sorry, the camera keeps getting knocked around. So that's it for today. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, we'll check, check you later. Bye.